They say no map is without sin, and that's why I'm here today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Total Map Reviews, where we're going to be taking a look at Carpat by Battlecott. By the way, this video is going to be a little more explicit than usual. Oh god, how do I even begin? The Carpathian Mountains will not be friendly to you. Prepare for difficult survival with minimal loot. Not gonna lie, this description kinda sounds like I got in trouble with the Mexican cartel and now they're sending me death threats. Oh no, the cartel will not have mercy on your family. Prepare for to get killed by two gangster guys wearing tuxedos. So this is a community project made by these five people. Wait, five people made this? And one of them is an actual game developer, and yet they made a tunnel entirely out of compound objects, which Nelson specifically outlawed in his guide for official content. The idea behind it is to have a survival-based map where nature governs, resources are spares, and players must group together in order to learn to survive and... Oh shit, this is the clip where the wolf kills my whole team. The setting itself looks kinda like a more depressed version of Russia. At least they had the decency to use speed trees, unlike the Ireland guys. There seems to be a larger density of trees, which alongside the lighting gives the map a very eerie, desolate feeling. It is actually quite nice and refreshing after all these other bright and colorful maps which came out in the past year or so. The GPS is just a chart, while the actual chart has some edgy drawings on it which mark out certain parts of the map like the NPC areas and the dead zones. Almost every location has the most generic fucking name ever, like this one is called just farm. That's it. And what's even worse, this isn't actually farm, it's the only location to have an actual name on the map which is called Putanovo. This is actually farm. Why is it called that? Where are all the crops? This makes no sense. Mrs. Bublik, I figured out the reason for your son's tragic death. It was just a ugly game of drunken truth or dare chess roulette. Yes, I know, it is very sad. But Andre knew the rules very well. Lose the night, say good night. When you start off, typically you'll want to loot one of these locations first. Most of them are redundant though, so I won't even talk about them. Garbage Recycling Factory is where the shit is at. Coming here early gives you a huge advantage if you're lucky enough to find a gas mask or at least a good starting weapon from one of the hidden spots. Then, you can either go to Putanovo, where you will find a bulldog on the ground because hell yeah this map is super balanced, or to Village, which canonically is called this, although you're still gonna call it Village because that's a long ass name, not to mention the ancient runic alphabet. Now it's time to choose your class. Default options include Slav, Hunter, Corrupt Police Officer, even John Scarus if that's what you're into. If I don't kill myself right now. This is also the point at which you should start gathering some food and meds, which is actually awfully easy once you're in a town, not to mention the amount of secret rooms where you can find some pretty decent shit if you're lucky. There is also a cucumber that you can farm, and it's actually better than both corn and lettuce, and it only occupies one inventory slot, so farm a couple of these and you're set, especially considering how clothing items on carpet have really tiny amounts of space, and getting a backpack doesn't help much either. By now you probably want a way to navigate faster. You could go to air control and find a helicopter, <laughs> but that will not happen. So instead Battlecott and the guys have provided us with such classics as Reskin Buzz, Reskin Police Car, Reskin Ambulance, which has less seats than a normal one and much shittier cover, and last but not least, the glorified sedan. Just be careful around this tunnel in the north of the map, because your vehicle takes damage for no reason whatsoever whenever you pass through it, so try avoiding it completely if you don't want to take any chances of your vehicle exploding. Also, if you don't find a car, well, don't get upset. The map is medium sized, so you should do just as well on foot. Oh, and they added a fake train instead of a drivable one as well, but I'm too tired to be disappointed. Occasionally, you might happen to witness an airdrop coming down at Radio Tower. It can spawn guns, but you can find other types of rare loot, such as gas masks, medkits, and of course, toothbrushes. But there's a problem. Since there is only one airdrop location, not only is it going to be a highly contested area, but if some cancerous bastard decides he wants to claim every airdrop for himself, he can build a massive base there and no one could stop them. Since this raiding gear is so hard to get. But where exactly do you get raiding gear from? Yo, welcome to the train station, motherfucker. The most capitalist place on earth. You need something? As long as you got that sweet, sweet cash to spare, it's yours. It's like a little piece of America. 
Any mission that these guys will give you, you'll get money for it. If you want, you can turn XP into cash and vice versa. And since there are so very few zombie spawns on carpet for some reason and chopping down trees doesn't give you much experience, this is the best way to farm XP. Climb to the top of the social ladder and then become dirt poor. That's capitalism for you. There's this guy downstairs who offers you a charge for three Chris Corrects and will trade you almost any gun you want, including one of the new ones, if you have a positive reputation. But if you choose to be a bandit KOS or scum, there's still hope. There's this other guy in the north of the map who sells the same shit just for a little more money. It is also to be noted that these guys don't exactly have the best English. Like, listen to this guy. Found? Great, give them here. What's on the tip? Hold C4. In the chalet there is a secretory one. Look for a wall a little broken. Well, there's an explosive. All yours. Well, that's just fantastic. Also, for some reason, this dude asks you to find him PC parts, and I don't know if it's a bug, but even if you complete it once, he keeps asking for more. I mean, what could a person possibly do with so many fucking GPUs? That's my question. Alright, so I found a processor for the guy, but now I just need to find the graphics card, and I don't think I can find it in here. I... Oh, what? What is this? Are these supposed to spawn here? I've never seen anything like... Wait. Huh? Whoa! Who's this? Who the hell are you? Is this why they're so expensive? The two new guns that come with this map are the Vitias and the Glaz. The Glaz is a Russian rifle which 5 shots a player to the body and 3 shots them to the head if the player is fully armored, which your average carpet survivor won't be. It has the same range as a Timberwolf and it is not that great in close combat despite its semi-automatic firing. It's good against zombies though, but using it that way would kinda be a waste. The Vitias is just fucking broken. It only takes one extra bullet to kill a player to the body and head compared to the glass and it's fully automatic. What's even worse is you can find this thing literally anywhere. Taking a stroll in the office? Oh look, a Vitias, no mind if I do. This gun is also super viable in early to mid game since you can refill its mags using civilian bullets and it makes even a garbage player like me look like an actual god. So why even use anything else? Your encounters with other people will either be incredibly hostile or incredibly chill depending on who you're dealing with since the map encourages against KOSing but some people just can't help themselves. But players aren't gonna be your biggest problem. There are some mutant animals like Big Mama over here who will absolutely devour your ass if you're not careful enough. Now you could handle them with a few bullets, sell the leather to this guy, make some fat stacks, or you could use this thing called the Kepka, which is a hundred times more fun. It is also super easy to craft so just put a thousand of these around your base, I don't know, just don't waste them on players oh. since it can't oh. instantly kill them. If you still haven't managed to get a gas mask yet, you could either go to this crashed hind just south of the danger zone, or you could dig your way into this secret room at the mansion. If you also happen to find some blueberry candy, you could either use it to get high, or be a good citizen and sell it to this Dankaby NPC, who was actually a reference to Daniel from the damn Daniel meme. If you haven't died like an idiot by now, then congratulations my friend, you have officially reached endgame. You are now ready to take on the challenge of the dead zone and kick ass, or, you know, die, and you would actually look like even more of an idiot then. If you decide to go to the bunker dead zone, you've made a horrible, horrible mistake. Unless you're into shitty item spawns and long, long staircases that lead to absolutely nothing. Then my friend, you've hit jackpot. There are actually Luger spawns down here. Yeah, you know, the reskin cult. And it's listed as a fucking legendary drop. 
This map is officially a meme. If you choose the other place though, I think it's called like Ghost Valley or something, the spawns are a little better. You can find some pretty decent guns up in the church tower, or again you could find nothing. Just bring enough filters so you don't put yourself in a bad spot, and good god be careful around these monster things, or you're gonna wish you were actually dead in real life too since they just launch at you out of nowhere and this place is absolutely infested with them. I bet at this point you're like, oh my god, Sir Eddie, this map looks awesome. I'm gonna go to the Steam Workshop and subscribe to it right now, and I'm gonna play it all week because I got nothing else to do with my life. But before you do, here's why Carpet isn't all that great. Now don't get me wrong, I've had a bit of fun on this map, it definitely allows you to invest a couple good hours into it, but I can't get over how utterly lazy they were when making this thing, from the little details like how they didn't bother to add a yellow texture to the glass magazine, the broken ass physics, the copy and pasting, to the more apparent stuff like how empty the buildings are and this. The map doesn't feel unfinished, it just screams we didn't care please buy our bundle, which by the way isn't all that great either, you can't even see the custom mesh on the Zubegnikov skin while holding the gun in your hands. What I also find annoying is that despite priding itself on being this impossible hardcore map, it fails to deliver. Finding a good gun in the first 15 minutes of gameplay is just too common. You can find MREs in civilian locations and NPCs are just way too easily exploitable. It's just too unbalanced to work and it's all over the place. And yes, that is a heat stim on a map where it doesn't snow. But one of the things that personally pisses me off the most about Carpet is it's not unique enough in a good way. Remember how Yukon was the first snowy map, and Washington was the first PvP based map, and then we got Russia which was the first large map and featured NPCs, and then Hawaii which was controversial but had these cool caves and was tropical, and then Germany? It had some tall mountains and Berlin, but we had seen big cities before so it didn't really bring anything new other than its verticality. And Greece had a lot of quests and it looked pretty nice but it really ended up feeling very similar to Russia, especially if you take a look at the layout. And ever since, every new survival map release started reusing old concepts over and over again. Carpet just feels like Russia but with much less to offer. And you can't really blame them since every possible map setting has been done, except for maybe a desert. And the day that a desert map will be added, there will be little to nothing left to explore in terms of survival maps. And you know what? I agree that carpet might actually be quite decent, but it doesn't help the fact that it's becoming more and more apparent that nowadays this shadow of the game which it used to be is feasting off of these half-assed community updates which don't really bring anything new to the table, with this map making absolutely no exception, even though it had so much potential to be great. RIP CARPART and so our beloved carpet scores a whopping 6.5 out of 10, please try again. Actually, no, just please rot in curated map hell for the rest of eternity, thanks.